Live from the Las Vegas Strip Studio in downtown Las Vegas, Nevada, it's Better Center Live. I'm your host, Brad Stein. You can watch us on bettercenter.com, also on YouTube at Louis Diamond and Facebook. We do this 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Monday through Friday on the weekend, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, hosted by Louis Diamond. Today, we have four sports handicappers, all professional, from all over the globe to help guide us. Make us a little money. Give us some advice. That's why they're here. We're going to introduce those guys. But before we do that, I want to tell you what I learned. Can I do that? Thank you. The LA Dodgers up three games to two. Clayton Kershaw. We often criticize him that he's not very clutch in the postseason, but he's four and one. Maybe it's just that Clayton Kershaw is not as dominant as we want him to be or expect him to be, but he's pitched well. Not dominant, but well. And I also learned that Antonio Brown is a new toy for Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Plus, we have one undefeated team left in the National Football League. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers. Could have, should have been the Seattle Seahawks. But once again, something that I learned a couple weeks ago, and we're going to learn every single week, the Seattle Seahawks don't play defense. Or maybe they play defense, they just don't do it well. But anyways, let's get the opinions that really matter. Those four guys from all over the globe. We have Tony Gulledge, Louis Diamond, Jip Trimbus, and Ross Benjamin. Gentlemen, welcome to Better Center Live. How are you this beautiful Monday morning? <laughs> Thank Big wins. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's Monday morning. A lot happened. So I came out on a rampage. Now it is time to talk to you. We're going to start with Ross Benjamin. Ross Benjamin, what did you learn from this weekend? Well, uh, oh, good morning, guys, by the way. Um, and thank you for your patience today. I uh, kept these guys up a little bit here. But anyway, uh, the L.A. Dodgers, Clayton Kershaw, you just mentioned him. And... Uh, you know, it's uh, he's a lot better pitcher in the postseason when there's only a 60-game regular season. That's all I could say. He only had 10 starts this year, and uh, he's not worn down. And, uh, you know, it, the effects of that are, are evident at this point. Like you said, he's not dominant, but he's surely a hell of a lot better he's been in years past. I learned the Dallas Cowboys have absolutely no heart in character. Um, <laughs> Andy Dalton takes a vicious hit, gets knocked out for uh, – you know, apparently gets knocked out, looked that way anyway. If not, he took a standing eight, and nobody, nobody reacted on the Dallas side. No offensive linemen, no offensive players, nobody came off the bench. Look, I'm not an advocate of people should fight in the NFL every time things don't go their way, but there's certain situations you're getting blown out against a division opponent, you've been down and out, that happens, you're down to your third string quarterback and nobody responds. Shows me that team has no character and uh, uh, they're in for a long season. Um, anyway, um, and then getting back to the Seattle Seahawks, like I've been saying all along, Brad, I've been trying to tell you, buddy, they don't play any damn defense. And it bit him in the ass last night, like I said it was going to eventually. Look, they got a Super Bowl caliber offense, but their defense is a four and twelve type team defense. They're not. If they do make the playoffs, which they probably will, I think they're going to be an early exit. Back to you, Brad. Mister Tony Gulledge, are you more impressed with the Pittsburgh Steelers being undefeated or the Tennessee Titans trailing by twenty points and making a wonderful, fabulous effort and almost overtaking Pittsburgh and almost winning the game, but field goal missed. I'm much more impressed by the effort of Pittsburgh. Uh, you see it a lot of times in the NFL. You build up these huge leads in games. Teams go to what I call the umbrella defense, where it literally is shaped like an umbrella across the back, and you let everything underneath. Teams get garbage yards. So coming back is one thing. Winning is what really matters. So that's what I keep in mind. Now, mentioning the Dallas Cowboys and their futility continues with that beating from the football team yesterday. Uh, when you think about Dallas, they joined an elite group since 1988. That would be my uh, sophomore year at college. So we're talking ancient history. Only eight teams had went 0-7 against the spread to start an NFL season. Uh, Dallas will join that group as they're now 0-7 against the spread. What I note of all those teams, 
the remainder of the rest of their games, they have won a combined 43 and 26 or 63%. So the great white capper has some actual numbers this time to give you. So moving forward, you would think with that Dallas would be the play, but man, it will be tough to pull the trigger. I learned what I've always known NFL. These games are never over till the over. Uh, you can't get happy. You can't get sad. You got to stick with it to the end. And that's the way these games yesterday, how many games were three points or less? I think I counted five, uh, especially the early games. The early games really came down to the very end. Uh, mentioning Kershaw, Ross beat me to it. Uh, Kershaw, half a season. This is literally like the all-star game for the number of innings his arm has on it. So, yeah, I would expect he's able to get better performances. Not shut down, but at this point, you just need to win games. And he's won his two in the World Series. He started two games. They've cashed twice, I believe. Hopefully I'm correct on that. So that's what yes. I learned this weekend. You got to stick with it and you can't allow, uh, you can't give up in these games. But moving forward, Dallas is in, a, in an elite group of sorry teams. In 32 <clears throat> years, they're only the ninth team to go 0 7 to start a season against the spread. So that's what I learned this weekend. Hey, and I also, Chip, one more thing. Can I throw one more thing in? I learned that no matter Chip. how bad your team is, in the NFC East, you can still win a division. It's a race to the bottom. The worst team is one and six. They're a game back in the win column of first place. So just stick with it if you're in the NFC East. There's always that chance you can you'll make the playoffs. Come on, Tony. We learned that week one that the NFC East stunk <laughs> and that you could go in there with a six and ten record. You're going to probably represent the NFC East and get to the playoffs. Now we move to the chipper, Chip Cherimbus. Yeah. What are the odds that Antonio Brown is on this Tampa Bay Buccaneer team when they make the postseason? Um, I wouldn't put odds on it. I think most likely he will be. But uh, what I have learned this weekend is that Cam Newton can no longer play NFL football, at least not at quarterback. He's always been a great running back, never been a great thrower. But I think the NFL's caught up with him. I really do. And the other thing I learned was – the Washington football team, the D.C. Swampers, the Swampers have a running back, Antonio Gibson out of Memphis. This kid can play football, and this Washington team is very underrated, and I just love the way they dominated the Cowgirls this weekend. <laughs> and they probably will dominate a lot of the NFC East opponents. <laughs> now we move to Louis Bag of Diamonds. What did you learn this weekend? A lot going on. Yeah, a lot going on. Uh, yeah, I agree with Chip, but, uh, you know, there's a little life there in this Redskin team right now. Kyle Allen's doing a pretty decent job. Now, granted, they had the Cowboys there yesterday, but uh, there's definitely some activity there. Potential <laughs> NFC East Division champions. So uh, I, I, I learned that, uh, but uh, I learned there's this quarterback uh, out there, uh, you guys might be familiar with him. A lot of guys were hating on him this year, um, but he looks pretty damn good. He's uh, not familiar. If you're not familiar, Tom Brady. I don't know if you're familiar with that name, but he gets a lot of hate. I mean, a lot of hate. And let me tell you something. He sure knows how to shut them haters up. You know, being a Buffalo guy, I got to listen to all these people hating on Tom Brady the way they hate on him because he's owned them in a terrible way and uh you know i just think it's fun to see i uh i i love to see him excel the way he is excelling right now and tampa bay overs are sticking money in my pocket so they're putting points on the, at least yesterday they put big money in my pocket because you know i had that yesterday had a great day yesterday with uh my teasers told you no matter how you've teased uh pittsburgh and uh used uh and the Titan game, you had a winner, an absolute winner. We, we crushed yesterday, so I had a great day. So I learned that my teasers, they can cash. Big day yesterday. So hopefully you'll follow me a little bit more and uh, cash some tickets with me. Well, let's see if we can cash a ticket right now. We move to game number one. That's Monday Night Football. The Chicago Bears at the L.A. Rams. Rams minus seven, currently minus six, with the over-under opened at 47, currently 45. Let's go to Chip Cherimbus and start with game number one. Antonio Brown has already signed the contract with the Patriots, unless he does something weird during the year. 
he'll miss out on his 2.5 million and the playoffs, but he's a Patriot as of now. Um, this Bear game but, is kind of interesting because the Bears have four, excuse me, the Rams have four wins this year. And who did they beat? They beat all four teams in the N and C NFC East. They beat the Giants, they beat the Redskins, they beat the Eagles, and they beat the Cowboys. So now they're gonna play the Bears, who are five and one, who only have one win against a winning team, and that is a 20 to 19 win over Tampa Bay. But the Bears can barely move the ball. Um, they have the number four defense. The other side, the Rams have the number seven defense. This game most likely, I think, is destined to go under the total. And otherwise, I think that laying six is a lot of points for a team that hasn't beaten anybody with a winning record. And I would take a lean toward the home team favorite. They're 2-0 and at home so far this season, both straight up and against the points. I'll take the Rams. And I know there's somebody out there that likes the other side. <laughs> Come on, Ross. The Bears are pretty decent. I mean, at least they win. They don't have an explosive oh, offense. Boy, the defense oh, has been good, not great. Is that too many points to lay for the Rams? Six? I, I think so, and I'm never telling you anything. <laughs> I don't want anybody else to know, Chipper. Anyway, this what this is now that Chip has let the cat out of the bag. This no, is no, I didn't this say it was you. Yeah, well, I mean, you know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Look. um, <laughs> I do like the other I do like the points, Brad. Uh, before I get to that pick real quick, uh, NFL right now just absolutely on fire, guys. Three and one this week going into tonight. Five and one last week. That's eight and two in the last 10 and 24 and 12 with my last 36 NFL uh, pay picks. It's all documented at sportscapping.com. We're right now, uh, I'm ninth out of 75 handicappers in the NFL being, uh, being monitored. Anyway, let's nice. get to this game. Um, look, the L.A. Rams, Chipper brings up a good point. Uh, the only two winning teams they've played so far, when I say winning teams that currently have a winning record, are the Buffalo Bills and the San Francisco 49ers, and they lost and failed to cover in both of those games. They've beaten up on the, the, the NFC least, and uh, so that goes – hand-in-hand uh, hand with how I like to handicap and look at strength of schedule. The Bears, um, many may be surprised to know, Chicago's 3-0 and straight up in ATS on the road this year. In all three of those games, they were an underdog. Yes, the Bears have trouble moving the ball uh, at times. I think still Nick Foles is their guy way better off with him than Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, the Bears' defense is good enough to keep them in most games, and I think they will tonight. I'm going to lean here, or I'm going to take, excuse me, no leans here. I'm going to take the Chicago Bears plus the points, Brad, over the L.A. Rams on Monday Night Football. Break the tie, Lou Diamond. Who do you have? Oh, it's going to be easy to break this tie here today, guys. And uh, uh, this is, uh, well, tie on the total. I know we definitely got an underplay here today. Ten and one for the Bears to the under following an ATS win and uh, six and one to the under when they face a team with a winning record. The Rams come in with six straight unders in October, seven and one to the under after an ATS loss, six and one as a home favorite to the under. So I am certainly having some love on this under uh, five and two the last seven times that they have met. Now, this isn't your Jay Cutler Chicago Bears. Because when the Chicago Bears played on Monday night, it was the greatest fade of all time. You bet against the Bears on Monday night with Chicago, with, when Cutler was in there. But now, the Bears, 4-0 on Monday night football. So I got to like the points here. I definitely feel like uh, like the, uh, Ross said, they've played the NFC least. And I don't see how that equates to a six-point favorite right now. Got to believe the points have some value. I definitely love the under here tonight. So I think you can make some money. And it's a super, super nice teaser, Bears and under. Back to you, Brad. All right, Tony G. Rams minus six. Yeah, interesting matchup. You got two defenses ranked in the top seven in yardage allowed. Um, I also note that third down percentage defense. Bears second in the league, 32%. Rams sixth in the league at 37%.
basically what I'm saying is the punters better do their Pilates because they're probably going to get a lot of work tonight. Uh, that does make that under seem more logical than anything, uh, Lou, with those specific numbers. Definitely the trends I'm seeing would lean to a lower scoring game just because teams might struggle to move the ball. Bears, this is the – and uh, Ross noted 3-0 and on the road, ATS straight up as underdogs. But none of those – they didn't play back-to-back -back road games yet. This will be the first time that they've come into that scenario. I think it's a tricky spot for Chicago off the straight up win, Carolina Rams. The thing I don't like about the Rams is that offensive inconsistency. It bothers me. It scares me a little bit. Uh, they did this 17-9 win against the Giants at home. Not very impressive. Didn't quite make the number, but the defense grind was grinding. And uh, I think you might see that again to here tonight where the Rams are going to play a grinding game. I think the Rams are going to cover this number. It's the pick that makes no sense, but I'm going to play it. Look for something in the neighborhood of 23 to 10 Rams. Don't, you know, I'm going to try to put a solid number on 23 10 and Rams. That'll be my play tonight. Give it us a score. I know 23 10. That's very impressive. Hey, you got to do that. We're not loaded with games here, guys, but we're loaded with information on bettercenter.com. This is Better Center Live. Also, you can watch us on Louis Diamond on YouTube and Facebook. We have the four Musketeers here, guys. We have one more game. It's the World Series. It's game number six. Dodgers up 3-2. This could be it. This could be the finale. On the mound, we have Snell for Tampa Bay and Gonsolin for the Dodgers. Uh, this game opened up at minus 135 LA. It is currently minus 136 with an over under of eight. And we're going to start with you, Tony. Hey, for the series, I like Tampa Bay. Dodgers, am I right? Does Kershaw started two games in the World Series? Is that right? Two or games. He's 2-0. Yeah, and he yes, has yes. Like, oh, yeah, yes. So they've won two. The two two of their three wins have been Kershaw starts. Um, Dodgers, I still still sense they can choke this away. I really do. It's just a you call it a gut feeling. I've seen this through team before. These smaller markets where you had the Houston, the Kansas City. I wouldn't call Houston smaller market, but not a big, well known baseball dynasty like the Dodgers are. Your Royals sneak one in. The Marlins snuck. When you think of back over the last 20 years, times teams have snuck in titles. And uh, and winning the last two games is not unheard of. Coming from 3-2 down in the World Series, you know, I could think of quite a few right off the top of my head. So I'm not giving up on Tampa yet. They've got Kershaw. The only way I see Kershaw pitching is maybe game seven, trying to get a left-hander out. Other than that, you know, he's not going to be there. And that bullpen, right, Kenley, Kenley Jansen. You know, this is the thing I, I criticize him for. Not that he gave up the hit, but the fact he didn't back up the plate. The dude was halfway up the line as the pitcher. Why the hell are you halfway up the line and not backing the play? Not saying he could even get to that ball and make a play, but he was completely brain dead, not where he's supposed to be. I think that was the, you know, to me, that that's telling. When you can't play mentally sound sports, athletics, like he didn't, I think it cost him. And I still, I'm going to back Tampa Bay here. I still think that they can get to these other pitchers. This bullpen, they they got it done from Blake Trinan, but the dude for the Nationals was a gas can. Every time I would bet with him pitching, I would be nervous. If I was a Dodgers fan and you see these guys coming in, I would be nervous as well. They did get the win in game five, take the series lead. But I think from here to the end is Tampa Bay six and seven. Thank you. Are we going to seven games, Chip, or not? Chip. Now, um, I'm going to have to wait on this because I don't like losing these games, and I don't like losing these big games. So I'll have a selection tomorrow on it. But right now, I'm not going to project anything. I want to say I want the dust to settle, and um, I want to be able to make a clear-headed decision. Ross Benjamin. Way too early for me as well, uh, Brad. It's, uh, you know, with this – Everything going on in the era we live in right now, I've learned not to pull the trigger too quick, especially if you're giving me a day more to think about it when it comes to the World Series. I will say this. The way balls are flying out of the ballpark there in Arlington um, and the fact that all five of these games have gone over the total, I just wonder, you know, going into the series, the Arlington ballpark, the new ballpark in Arlington, I should say, was noted as a pitcher-friendly ballpark because the Rangers games went under the total so many times. This shows you how bad the Rangers were because these teams are they're, they're crucifying the ball. 
And uh, I would find it hard to play the under, that's for sure, based on what I've saw so far, not because both teams are hitting for an average, just the fact that the long ball has been uh, – has, has happened way too often in this series for me to feel comfortable going under the total, especially with a number of eight. But right now, uh, don't have a uh, def- decisive opinion right now on this, Brad. So I'm going to turn it back to you and see what Louis says. Sure. Very understandable. Louis, Dodgers minus 135, over, under, anything? Yeah, I'll make it easy. I'll uh, I'll uh, give uh, Ross a little boost and a little fire under the feet because uh, he's in the right direction. The over definitely seems to be the play in this scenario. Not all five have gone over. Four out of the last five. Last night was a 4-2, but still four out of five have gone over. Snell has gone over versus the Dodgers his last two outings. Snell was a dead under pitcher, became an over pitcher. Then he went to a little bit of an under pitcher in the playoffs, but now he's back to an over pitcher again. So I see the over having plenty of value here. And uh, Gonsolin, uh, as much as he has been an under pitcher, three straight overs in his last three outings, and he hasn't gotten the wins that he had in the regular season. So I got to give an edge to Tampa Bay here in this game, but I definitely, definitely feel the over should be some action for you here tomorrow in the World Series. All right, guys, two up, two down. That was very easy on bettercenter.com, also on YouTube at Louis Diamond, and of course, Facebook for our fantastic team Chip Chirimbis, Ross Benjamin, Louis Bag of Diamonds, Tony Gulledge, our producer and director, Mr. Eugene. Thank you, Spotlight Film Productions, for everything you do. Have a wonderful day. We'll catch you next time. Remember, we'll see you Thursday, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Also, weekends, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We do it live. I'm Brad. This is Better Center Live. Have a great day.